Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here, and today we're going to learn about standard form word problems. These are different kind of word problems than the last ones we've been looking at. Before, that was slope-intercept form, and we always had a starting value, the y-intercept, and a rate of change, or a rate, that's the slope. Here, instead, these word problems are going to be different situations. So let's look at the standard form equation and see how we set these word problems up. First of all, the standard form is ax plus by equals c. c is always going to be the total in these situations. So when you find a total, you know that's going to be by itself. Notice that we have a times x and b times y. a and b act like rates. They're multiplied by x and y, respectively, because their rates. If x is our item and a is the rate, you multiply that together to see how much total from that first item there are. And for if y is a different item, then b is the rate that is associated with that item. That's why we multiply those together. So often these kinds of problems look like two different items that each have a rate associated with them. Let's get started on this. The band booster club is selling t-shirts and blanket wraps to raise money for a trip. The band director has asked the club to raise $1,000. That looks like a total to me. So that's going to be our total. That's C. The booster club president wants to know how many t-shirts and how many blanket wraps the club needs to meet their goal of $1,000. The t-shirts cost $10 each. Notice the word each. So that's a rate. And the blanket wraps cost $25 each. So we have t-shirts and blanket wraps. If the booster club sells 14 blanket wraps, how many t-shirts must be sold? Before we get to the question, which I'm gonna underline in purple there, we need to figure out what our X and our Y are. Since we're looking for number of t-shirts, let's just make X the number of t-shirts. That's our unknown. It's t-shirts and blanket wraps, so my other variable is going to represent the number of blanket wraps. See, we have two items. The rates that are associated with each of these, 10 is the rate associated with t-shirts because that's the cost of each t-shirt. 25 is the cost of each blanket wrap. And see the total? Well, that's 1,000, like we mentioned before. So we set up our equation by saying, all right, well, 10x, that's 10 times the number of t-shirts is going to be the total money from all the t-shirts. And 25 times y is going to be all the total money from all the blanket wraps. If we add those together, that should equal the total. Notice the standard form. Do you see how 10 and 25 are our rates? And they're multiplied by their respective variables. Now, to solve the problem, we usually are given x or y. In this case, we're told that there are 14 blanket wraps, and we made blanket wraps be y. <clears throat> if we had called blanket wraps x and t-shirts y, our rates would have switched, and we would have had an a equation that is just as valid. But in this case, blanket wraps is y here, so y equals 14. That means we're just going to plug in 14 and solve for x. So let's plug in 14 right there instead of y. And to solve this, we need to multiply those out. 25 times 14 is 350. Let me rewrite the equation over here. Then we're going to subtract 350 and divide by 10. So x equals 65. What does that mean? Well, that means that there are 65 t-shirts sold. For the next problem, your school sells adult tickets and student tickets as sold at a school play. Adult tickets cost $15 each. Student tickets cost $4. Notice that we have two different items and each one has a rate associated with it. The total value is 7,000. <clears> so we have adult tickets, we're gonna call that X, and then number of student tickets is Y. Make sure you say number of because the cost we already have. And it's the number of adult tickets and number of student tickets, which are the two variables in our equation to start. 
15 is the rate for the adult tickets. That's $15 each. Four is the rate for the student tickets. That's $4 each. And 7,000 is the total value of all the tickets. So we have 15x plus 4y equals 7,000. There we have our equation in standard form. And now we just need to solve. Well, we said the director is predicting 352 adult tickets will be sold. Adult tickets, that's our x up here. So this time I'm plugging in the 352 for x. So let's put 352 there in place of x. Then we just can use our calculator and multiply that out. Subtract the 5,280 from each side. Divide by 4 and we get y equals 430. So 430 student tickets are sold. Before we move on, I'm gonna show you guys how to check your work here. You can always check by writing out your equation. So 15 times 352, that's gonna be the value from all the adult tickets. And four times 430, that's the value from all the student tickets. That should add up to 7,000. Does it? Well, when you type it into your calculator, it does. Check. <clears throat> These next set of problems, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through them very quickly, identifying each of the X and Y and their rates and the total, and you'll see how fast we can set these up. So, sandwiches are $5 each, bottles of water are $1 each, and the total is 100. So, sandwiches is X, bottles of water is Y, 5X plus 1Y equals 100. If no waters are sold, <clears throat> how many sandwiches must be sold? Well, we said water is y. So if no waters are sold, that means y is equal to zero. So we're gonna plug in zero for y. That's a nice thing to plug in because we get five x equals 1,000. Or sorry, 100. And divided by five, we get x equals 20. So we need to sell 20 sandwiches if no waters are sold. A restaurant needs to plan a seating party for 150 people. That looks like a total there. Large tables seat 10 people. <clears throat> Small tables seat six. This time our rates are not money, and it's not always gonna be money, so sometimes you need to identify what the other rates are. Here we have 10 people per table, per large table, and six people per small table. So let's make that our X and our Y, and you get 10x plus 6y equals 150. Now, now that we have our equation, the restaurant wants to use exactly 12 large tables. That is going to be x, because we said large tables represents x. So 12 large tables, we plug that in for x, multiply it out, Solve for y, and we get y equals 5. There are five small tables needed. A baker sells <clears throat> bread for $3 a loaf. That's going to be x, and rolls for $1 each. The roll number of rolls is y, and we need a total of $24. So our equation is 3x plus 1y equals 24. Five loaves, loaves uh, we already said was x, so x equals five. Plug in five, 15 plus y equals 24. Subtract 15 from both sides and you get the number of rolls needed is nine. A local charity selling seats to a baseball game. Seats cost 20, snacks cost $5. We'll make seats X and snacks Y. The charity needs to raise $400 total. So 20X plus 5Y equals 400. How many snacks must they sell if 17 seats? Well, seats was X, so X equals 17. We're gonna plug that in right there for X. Now we multiply them together and solve for y. When you do that, you get 12. 12 snacks must be sold. 
A movie theater sells tickets to a new show for $10 each. Each ticket will be X. The number of tickets is X. It's also selling boxes of popcorn, or small containers of popcorn. We'll call the number of containers Y. The total is 3,000, so we have 10X plus 6Y equals 3,000. If 252 tickets are sold, well, the number of tickets, that's X. So X equals 252. Plug that in for X. Then we get that. Solve for Y. And we get the number of popcorn boxes sold is 80. Thank you very much for watching.